Well, happy Friday and welcome back to the channel, guys. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while. I always found this to be very fascinating, this whole incident. In my mind, I always wanted to do this video on site in Kentucky, but due to time constraints and stuff, I don't see it happening anytime soon. But in the future, I would like to do a more proper video on this topic. But for today, we'll go over a little bit of the history of the museum, exactly why the sinkhole happened, and the fate of the eight cars that fell in the hole. And I learned quite a bit doing this little research project. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go ahead and get into it. The Corvette Museum opened in 1994. It's just a stone's throw away of the actual plant that makes the Corvette. The same plant that's turned out every Corvette in almost the last 40 years. The museum itself kind of serves as where the Corvettes come. Uh, it's lineage. It's got a very neat story. It's one of the longest lineage cars ever made. Uh, we're almost at 70 years now, which is pretty nuts for an unbroken streak for a car, except for 83 when California got its dick in the door. But there was supposed to be an 83. Well, that's, that's a story for another time. But yes, this place has some very unique Corvettes on display, uh, some one-offs, special editions, you name it, this museum's probably seen it. It's got the almost 800,000 mile original engine C5 Corvette, which is amazing. It even has a Ford Thunderbird on display when you walk through to kind of show where the Corvette came from and its original rivals, which I think is really neat. And in this museum, you will see the Sky Dome and houses a lot of Corvettes. And that's pretty much the focal point of what happened. And in this, this dome area was a lot of research Corvettes. One's never put into production. Concept Corvettes, priceless Corvettes. You understand what the museum's for and you get the point, the importance, especially of this room. So on the morning of February 12th, 2014, approximately 5.38 a.m., the ground pretty much opened up and swallowed eight Corvettes. At its deepest point, 30 feet. So these, these eight cars that got swallowed pretty much fell between 25 and 30 feet, which is pretty damn nuts. Now, can you imagine coming to work? I imagine workers probably get there about eight in the morning and you walk, you're doing your walk through, whatever they do there, and you go in this room and not only are the cars missing, but they're in a hole. You gotta be kind of taken back. I know I would be. And he called the boss, you're like, yeah, hey man, um, uh, so, um, I wouldn't know where to start, you know? And he, you tell him, I'm not gonna believe you if I'm your boss, like, okay. You know, no, like the ground swallowed them. They're gone, they're in a hole. That's insane. When I think of sinkholes, I think of Florida. But doing some research on this, there's actually a lot of sinkholes in Kentucky. Who would have thought? All right, here's a little bit of science and geography or topo topography for you lesson. I, I just learned about this today. So in central and south Kentucky, they call it the karst type topography, if you will which is characterized by the prominence of water soluble rocks such as limestone. And over the course of many, many, many years, dissolving of such rocks leaves cavities, which turn into drainages and springs. And then eventually you have caves and caverns. And when the roofs of these cavities or caves have too much weight, gravity takes over and there you go. There's probably a lot more technical stuff to this and there's probably a geologist watching this cringing and I apologize. Long story short, Limestone under the ground in Kentucky, it erodes, you got caves, weight falls in the caves, in goes Corvettes. All right, so now you're kind of caught up what's going on, when it happened, how it happened. Now we're gonna go over the eight very specific Corvettes that fell in the hole and their fate. Now some of this is kind of gnarly and some of the pictures I'm gonna be posting are pretty gruesome. And each one of these Corvettes in their own right is pretty damn cool and it sucks. And I will say before we get started, three of these Corvettes were fully restored and some were not and you'll see why. All right, we'll start with the ZR1, the 2009 Blue Devil. Now this car suffered the least amount of damage of all the cars that fell in the hole. Now this one's crazy to where it fell 30 feet on top of the rest of the Corvette. It was one of the last Corvettes to fall in the hole. The crazy thing about this one, when they pulled it out, it drove on its own out of the museum. So that kind of goes to show the integrity of these, the C5, C6 frame rigidity that is nuts that blew my mind when i read that today so yeah when they pulled it out craned it out after it fell 30 feet it drove itself on out and the damage is pretty minimal it's not too bad they did take off every panel fixed any structural thing they could put all the panels back on replace where they did 
They tried to use as much of the original as they could, and the thing looks pristine now from, from the pictures. It's amazing. All right, second car we're gonna go over is the millionth Corvette. This car rolled off July 2nd, 1992. That's a lot of cars. One million cars, that's crazy. This Corvette was a huge milestone and GM was not gonna let it just go to waste. That's that's a huge deal, a millionth car. That's crazy. That just, it demands respect and it shows continuity and craftsmanship and the want for a product, which is pretty damn cool. Now this guy was actually pretty hard to get out of the, the cave. They had to lift with the one wheel first to get a better footing on it and then get the rest of it out. Looking at it, you would never think they salvaged it, but they salvaged this car back to its original form. What's also cool, when they started taking it apart, they noticed that all the plant workers, when they built this very last Corvette, most of them signed it. Uh, so they tried to track down all of the previous workers for all the panels they had to replace and had them resign it. Unfortunately, there were quite a few over the last 22 years that had passed away. So they transcribed their signatures as best they could on the new panels, which is pretty damn cool. So yeah, they really took their time with this and made it as authentic as possible back to the day it rolled off the plant back in 1992. Next Corvette, a 1962 black convertible. Gorgeous C1 Corvette, also swallowed up by this hole, also very mangled. Now, this car is actually donated to the plant. A few of these cars have been donated back in 2011, which is pretty cool. But also sucks, because you give it to the plant knowing it's gonna be in good hands, and then a few years later it falls in a sinkhole. That's unfortunate, but this one they also restored. And this one's kind of cool because they restored it on site. So people walking the museum could see the progress and see how they're doing, which is pretty neat. Uh, I think they finished it, what, two years ago? It looks amazing. You can never tell when it fell in a hole. So good team, the team that restored this thing, amazing job. Next is the 2009 white Corvette you see here. It was the 1.5 millionth Corvette. Now that doesn't have quite the same ring as the 1 millionth Corvette. And this thing was pretty, pretty damaged. Uh, so they did not restore it, unfortunately, but it is still on display. And when they first came upon the hole, it was so buried underneath the other ones, they didn't even know it was down there for a little bit. They're like, oh, we got another Corvette, and it was a 1.5 million Corvette down there. And by the pictures you can see, yeah, it's toast, unfortunately, but you can still see it if you want to see it. Next is a concept car. It's a 1993 Spider ZR1. You never see these because this, this was a concept. Uh, this car was also swallowed up, of course, like the other ones I've been talking about. And it was actually a concept built right there at Bowling Green, which is pretty neat. The extraction of this one was actually pretty tough. They had to remove a lot of rubble before they get to it. And from the pictures, you can see it's there's no save on this guy. Unfortunately, the zero ones are pretty rare. But like the 09, this one's also on display still if you want to see it. All right, this next one's pretty near and dear to my heart. It's, it's a 2001 Z06. I have an 01 Z06. So this one really, really kind of gets me in the feels, you know what I mean? The code name for this guy was Mallet Hammer, and it was donated to the museum just two months before this happened. I know, what are the odds of that? It sucks. This car had been featured on GM's High Tech Magazine, and it was sporting over 700 horsepower. Of all the cars that fell in the hole, this one suffered the most damage. The only intact piece of this car was a right rear wheel, which is crazy to me and there was no repair in this thing it, it was every component was destroyed you'd have to replace every component and by then you would have a whole new car but this car like the previous ones i've talked about is still on display next car a 1994 pace car more specifically an indie pace car and this was also a concept car that they used as a pace car very pretty car i'm not a huge c4 fan but i i do respect them they are very nice cars in their own right it still sucks what happened to this car. And it was a truly one of a kind car that they've never made any other ones. And it would almost be impossible to replicate this car now, given the parts available. Um, it's fate, it was found upside down. It's not terrible. Um, look at the pictures here. It probably could have been restored. At the end of the day, GM said they would have to replace more than half the parts and components. And by then it's not truly the essence of what the car was. So they decided to go ahead and keep it on display how it was as a reminder of the sinkhole incident, which they did, and you can go see it. And lastly, a 40th edition 1993 Corvette named Ruby fell in the hole as well. This may have been the least rare of all the cars that were to fall in the hole. Uh, it was one of about 6,000 type for that model year, so not, nothing too crazy. Nonetheless, a very pretty car. And this car, like a couple other ones, was also donated to the museum. Pretty cool. This car was actually up on a lift on display, so it actually fell probably about 37 feet into a hole. And like the previous few I talked about, the damage was 
way too far to bring it back within a reasonable means so they went ahead and kept it scrapped which is unfortunate. I feel bad for people that donated these cars because like, even me, if I were to donate my car to the museum one day or something, you would assume it's in the safest hands possible. You know, it's just the irony is cut it with a knife. Is that irony? So there you go, a little bit of history on the museum itself, the sinkhole incident and the cars and the fate. Uh, moving forward, there was talks, there was talks of keeping the sinkhole there and making it kind of like a little cave you can walk through. But financially and liability wise, it just isn't feasible. Uh, but you can still look down in it with some windows, which is kind of neat. And they have fortified it underneath so you can walk on it now. Uh, a lot of engineers, structural engineers, and I guess geologists as well, went through and made sure it was sound again before they started building it. Five of the eight cars were, were not restored and they're still on display. The other three, you have no idea anything ever happened to them, which is amazing. But yeah, I thought this was very fascinating. I wanted to share it with you guys. Kind of an easy watch, something to just kind of kick back and watch. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I do one day hope to get to the damn museum and I should take a tour. I'm like the Corvette guy. Everyone knows me as Corvette guy. I've never been there. It's crazy. And there's actually even a Corvette caveman sinkhole experience at the museum now. So it's kind of neat. They're really capitalizing on this sinkhole. And I would too, you know. Lemons make lemonade. You know, that's saying something like that. Well, in any case. Cool. I well, hope you guys enjoyed this. I had fun doing research on this today. It was kind of neat. Follow-up video on the sky coming tomorrow. Uh, I got how to adjust them. I got an alignment done with I'll take for a ride, doing the alignment and just uh, kind of cruising around, just farting around. It should be a fun little video. And yeah, and I'll have some more stuff for you guys next week. Um, next thing for this guy is gonna be a square setup. I gotta find some 18s up front for this and then we'll be doing big breaks. Cool. And some other little aesthetic things, nothing too crazy. Maybe a little bit of aero, nothing major. So that's what's coming down the pipeline for this guy. So that's all I got for tonight, guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Mark out.